service of Holy Eucharist begins on page 355. Hallelujah, <laughs> Christ is risen. Hallelujah. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen.
us pray. O God, who for our redemption gave your only begotten Son to the death of the cross, and by his glorious resurrection delivered us from the power of our enemy, grant us so to die daily to sin, that we may evermore live with him in the joy of his resurrection. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for the first reading. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter began to speak to Cornelius and the other Gentiles. I truly understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. That message spread throughout Judea beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John announced, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, how he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses to all that he did, both in Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree but God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear, to appear, not to all the people, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. All the prophets testify about him that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. The word of the Lord. Thank you, God. The psalm for today, as printed in your bulletin, is Psalm 118. We'll read it responsively, alternating at the asterisk. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His mercy endures forever. Let Israel now proclaim. His mercy endures forever. The Lord is my strength and my song. And he has become my there is a sound of exultation and victory. In the tents of the righteous. The right hand of the Lord has triumphed. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. The right hand of the Lord has triumphed. I shall not die, but live. And declare the works of the Lord. The Lord has punished me sorely. But he did not hand me over to death. Open for me the gates of righteousness. This is the gate of the Lord. He who is righteous may enter. I will give thanks to you, for you answered me. And have become my salvation. The same stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing. And it is marvelous in our eyes. On this day the Lord has acted. We will rejoice and be glad. A reading from the first letter of Paul to the Corinthians. Now I would remind you, brothers and sisters, of the good news that I proclaimed to you, which you in turn received, in which also you stand, 
through which also you are being saved, if you hold firmly to the message that I proclaim to you, unless you have come to believe in vain. For I hand it on to you as of first importance what I in turn had received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures, and that he appeared to Cephas, then to the twelve. Then he appeared to more than 500 brothers and sisters at one time, most of whom are still alive, though some have died. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles. Last of all, as to one untimely born, he also appeared to me, for I am the least of the apostles, unfit to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am, and his grace toward me has not been in vain. On the contrary, I worked harder than any of them, though it was not I, but the grace of God that is with me. Whether then it was I or they, so we proclaim, and so you have come to believe. The word of the Lord.
our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. Then Peter and the other disciple set out and went toward the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came, following him, and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple, who reached the tomb first, also went in, and he saw and believed. For as yet they did not understand the scripture that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their homes. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white, sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and the other at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. When she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabuni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Do not hold on to me, because I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Christ. In the name of one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. How do you feel when you go somewhere and anticipate finding things in a certain way only to discover that they're not at all what you expected? Maybe you visit a church expecting one type of service and instead find a different type of worship altogether. Perhaps you drive back to your hometown to look at the elementary school you attended or visit the home you were raised in only to discover that they've been altered beyond recognition or even torn down. While there, perhaps you go and try and surprise a friend that you grew up with only to discover that they've moved away. Now with these and undoubtedly countless other examples from your lives, you might experience any of a number of emotions, sadness, or disappointment, or amazement, or surprise. Over this past week, I hope you've tried to follow the full arc of Holy Week and perhaps put yourselves within the stories and readings of each day. I hope you've tried to experience for yourselves what those in the Gospels heard and felt and saw. And this morning I want to invite you to do that one more time. 
But this time, I want you to put yourselves in the place of those in this reading from John who came to the tomb of Jesus on that first Easter morning. Those who came for one thing and found something else entirely. And as you reflect on the resurrection, think about how you would feel, how you do feel when you see yourself standing before the empty tomb. Mary undoubtedly set out early that morning, expecting only to find her friend, her teacher, her Messiah, in the same place where he'd been left after being gently lifted down off the cross just a few days before. She likely never imagined that there would be an interruption to her deep grief. I'd wager there were no indications at all that the unchecked sorrow weighing her down would dissipate. And yet what was seen was not at all what she expected. She anticipated finding a stone blocking the entrance, and she instead found the stone rolled away and the tomb empty. She undoubtedly didn't expect to see the raised Jesus standing before her and talking to her and calling her by name. Peter and the beloved disciple didn't understand what they were seeing, or to take it in a slightly different direction, they were confused by what they were not seeing. And I do wonder, as they were feeling perplexed and not understanding what was happening on that morning, whether they were feeling, whether they were sensing love. The love of Jesus was present at his final meal with the disciples, a love for them and a love that he commanded them to share with others. That powerful love was present at the time of his death, not only at the foot of the cross, but on the cross during those final hours. And now on this Easter morning, the love that had been present throughout that week was revealed in the most magnificent way of all. It was an incredible love that Jesus demonstrated dying on the cross for the redemption of the world, and now it was that same powerful love, indescribable, that conquered death and the grave. It was that same powerful love that was the driving force behind the resurrection. This love, the love of God that binds him to his son, the love that's at the heart of all creation and the very reason that we are here, does something else incredible. It reversed things. In the words of C.S. Lewis, resurrection involved a series of changes moving in the opposite direction to those we see. It was a love that led God to raise one man because one day that man will raise all of us from the dead. Those who were there at the cross, those who saw Jesus laid in the tomb, saw things moving in one direction. They saw death and they saw separation. The plan of God was not visible, and it was that plan, already moving things in an opposite direction from what the disciples and the friends of Jesus saw. It was a plan that was put in place, the plan of resurrection and the plan of unification, the resurrection that has been promised to us all. But before that great day of great resurrection in the future, I ask this. Where do you see the moments of resurrection in your lives now? Do you experience moments when you approach something in life, something that feels deep inside as cold as the tomb, something from which you may sense separation or isolation by a heavy stone in your life or in the world, and discover instead that that stone is gone and the, inspect the cold that you expected is in fact incredible warmth? Look for those moments. Look for the moments, great and small, each day. Those times when you may expect one thing and find something else completely different. Something even more incredible than what you were expecting. When you find them, hold fast to them. Cling to them. Cherish them. For those incredible moments, those instances of resurrection are the powerful 
and visible and overwhelming signs of love. The love that God shared with Jesus. The love that Jesus shared with the disciples. The love the disciples were commanded to share and show with others. The love that was present at the cross. The love that defeated death. That love, God's love, resurrection love, is a love that is given for you. Amen. I invite you to stand and join me on page 292 as we renew our baptismal vows. Through the Paschal mystery, dear friends, we are buried with Christ by baptism into his death and raised with him to newness of life. I call upon you, therefore, now that our Lenten observance is ended, to renew the solemn promises and vows of holy baptism by which we once renounced Satan and all his works and promise to serve God faithfully in his holy Catholic Church. Do you reaffirm your renunciation of evil and renew your commitment to Jesus Christ? Yes. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, Creator and Emperor. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ. God, the Holy Spirit. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Will you continue in the apostles' teaching and fellowship, in the breaking of bread and in the prayers? I will for God's help. Will you persevere in resisting evil? And whenever you fall into sin, repent and return to the Lord. I will God's help. Will you proclaim by word and example the good news of God in Christ? I will God's help. Will you seek and serve Christ in all persons, loving your neighbor as yourself? I will God's help. Will you strive for justice and peace among all people? and respect the dignity of every human being. I will God's help. May Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us a new birth by water and the Holy Spirit, and bestowed upon us the forgiveness of sins, keep us in eternal life by his grace, in Christ Jesus our Lord. Prayers of the People, Form 3, are found on page 387 in the Book of Common Prayer. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. That we all may be one. Grant that every member of the Church may truly and humbly serve you. That your name may be We pray for Michael, our presiding bishop, Justin, the Archbishop of Canterbury, Mark, our bishop, Matt, 
our priest, for the people of Christ Martinsville and their rector, the Reverend John Adams, for grace and peace in the Diocese of Haiti, for the Diocese of Leeds and their bishop, the Right Reverend Nicholas Baines, for the church in the province of the West Indies in the Anglican cycle of prayer, and for all bishops, priests, and deacons. That they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world, especially those serving in the armed forces. Thomas, William, Nate, Nick, Hunter, and Jared. That there may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. That our works may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble and provide healing and comfort for Jenny, Julie, Tammy, Jimmy, John, Jim, Gary, Bonnie, and Whitney, Tom, Susie and Paul, Anne, Meg, Susan, Melvin, Joe, Betty, Martha, Jade, Kathy, Helen, Brian, Philip, David, Lauren, Sharon, Bob, Neil, Anthony, Amanda, Susan, Cheryl, Kaya, John, Al, Peggy, Russell, James and Vicki, Spiros, Julia, Shauna, Wayne, and Lauren. They may be delivered from their distress. Give to the departed eternal rest. Let light perpetual shine on them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. Let us pray for our own needs and those we may now name either silently or aloud. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace I give to you, my own peace I leave with you. Regard not our sins, but the faith of your church, and give to us the peace and unity of that heavenly city, where with the Father and the Holy Spirit you live and reign, now and forever. Amen. Amen. I know the bulletin now says we'll have the confession, but on this day when Christ rose from the dead and a day we commemorate as the day he defeated death and sin, I'm exercising my clergy prerogative that on this day, that sacrifice will be our confession. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. And now, my friends, the peace of the Lord be always with you.
haven't had a chance to say it yet, so happy Easter. Happy Easter. It is a joy to see you all here this morning. Uh, before we go forward with the announcements and the birthday and anniversary blessings, I would like to invite those members of the prayer shawl ministry who are here to join me at the altar. As they come forward, for those who may be visiting, we have a dedicated group of knitters here in the church who have taken upon themselves the wonderful mystery, uh, the wonderful ministry. Uh, for me, who can't knit, it is a mystery. <laughs> the wonderful ministry of knitting prayer shawls that can be given uh, to those who may need to feel themselves wrapped in love, uh, physically feel the embrace of love by the shawls. Uh, but also the prayers that we send with each one. And so on this day, these ladies here and some who couldn't be with us today have completed all of these shawls. So I thought Easter Sunday was an extremely appropriate time for me to bless them and then bless the continuation of the prayer shawl ministry. May God's grace and love be upon these shawls, warming, comforting, enfolding, and embracing. May they act as mantles serving as a safe haven, sacred places of security and well-being, sustaining and embracing those wrapped in them through both the difficult moments and the times of joy in this life. May the ones who receive these shawls be cradled in hope, kept in joy, graced with peace, and wrapped in love. Gracious God, we give you thanks for the gifts and talents with which you have bestowed us, your children. On this day, we give thanks especially for the hands and hearts of those who have created these prayer shawls. As they continue with this ministry of compassion and love, we ask you to bless their hands as they begin with nothing and create something warm and comforting. Bless their minds as they create something useful. Bless their imaginations as they create something unique and beautiful. Bless their hearts so that those whose lives they touch will know these were made with love. Bless their patience as they move forward, remaining focused on the task at hand. Bless their souls that they may remain open to continue making these gifts for those in need. Bless their families and friends who encourage them to continue making these gifts that provide hope, faith, and love. All this we ask in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. all the announcements that you'll find in the bulletin. Um, the parish office will be closed this week. Um, as my senior warden reminds me often, I need to take downtime, and so I'm going to try and take downtime this week knowing fully and confessing now that that's not going to be the case because there are things that I will have to do. But I'm going to try and do a better job this week. Uh, if you do need to reach someone, do either email the office or leave a voicemail, and someone will get back with you as soon as possible. Uh, in two weeks, on Saturday, April 13th, we'll have our next gathering of the Samaritan Peer-to-Peer -peer Support Group in the Parish Hall from 10 to 11.30. Uh, the invitation is here in the bulletin insert. And then on April 13th, for those who are here, we're going to have our parish work day at 9 a.m. Um, a very important announcement. I know on Easter Sunday, the temptation is to hug each other at the end of the service, say hello and leave. I'm going to put a slight obstacle in your way. Um, immediately following the service, I would ask everyone to gather in front of the church for a photograph. Uh, for those who may not be aware, uh, this year we celebrate the bicentennial of St. Stephen's Church. And as part of the time capsule we'll be preparing that will be placed under the floor of the church for 100 years, this photo will be printed and included in the time capsule that's sealed. 
so that 100 years from now when they open it, they will see your smiling faces. <laughs> so again, immediately following the service, it will gather right outside in front of the church for a quick photo. Um, I also want to take a moment to thank everyone that's been helping this week with the preparations for the services. Today especially, I want to thank Dana. I'd like to thank Izzy, Connor, our one-man handbell choir, all the members of our choir and all the service, service participants here, as well as those who've helped with other services this week as readers uh, and uh, those helping me lead the liturgy. I can't do this alone, uh, and so I'm grateful for everything that everyone has done this week. Uh, are there any birthdays or anniversaries this week that I can... Please join me. If you all will take the insert that has the readings for the day and turn to the back page, I will invite you to join me in saying a prayer for a birthday for Joe. For those who may be visiting for the first time or who have not been with us in a while, we do share in communion at the altar rail. Um, I will come by and distribute the bread. Uh, B and Penny, my Eucharistic ministers, will come by with the wine, and there are two ways you can take the wine. If you're comfortable drinking from the chalice, we have that available. We also have a smaller intinction cup if you prefer to dip your wafer in the wine instead. If you simply wish to receive a blessing, uh, as you kneel at the rail, please cross your arms in front of you, and I'll know to do that. Uh, and if for whatever reason you're more comfortable receiving communion in your seat, uh, please let one of our ushers know and we'll be delighted to bring communion out to you. And now ascribe to the Lord the honor to his name. Bring offerings and come into his court.
Taxpayer A begins on page 361. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. But chiefly are we bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. For he is the true Paschal Lamb, who was sacrificed for us and has taken away the sin of the world. By his death he has destroyed death, and by his rising again to life, he has won for us everlasting life. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. sin and become subject to evil and death, you, in your mercy, sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also, that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him, and with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, 
Hallelujah. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the peace. Hallelujah. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith, with thanksgiving.
Continuing on page 365, let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food and the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace. And grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and your minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be with you on this day of resurrection, and remain with you always. Amen. And now I invite you to stand and join me as we sing our closing hymn number 210, The Day of Resurrection. Amen. 